To build the rear assembly, we have to change to our rear configuration. Going to our configurations tab, I'll double click on rear assembly. You see that it still looks the same as the front assembly. What we now have to do is change the configuration of the wheel component within this assembly to be the rear wheel configuration. So here we see front wheel is activated. We'll right click on this, go to components, and change this to rear wheel. Now we see this is the rear wheel configuration of this wheel component. We know that because we have the splines that engage the sprocket. Just to be on the safe side, we'll go back to our configurations. I'll double click on front assembly. You see that toggles to the front configuration, rear assembly, the rear wheel configuration. All that's left to do now is add the sprocket and the locking ring and we will comp have this assembly completed. The first part that I will insert will be the sprocket. And I will just drag this into the graphics window. And again we have the problem where its orientation is somewhat different from the orientation of the wheel. So I'm going to just orient it to be in the approximately correct position by rotating it. And what I need to do is make this face of the hub coincident with this stepped face of the sprocket. I also need to make sure that the axis of the hub and the axis of the sprocket are coaxial just like we did with the tire and the wheel. Fortunately, I have an axis through the sprocket just like the other parts. And another way we can do our mates is to pre-select the items we're going to mate together and then hit our mate command. So I'm going to open up the sprocket, open up the wheel, I'm going to click on the axis of the wheel, scroll down, and while holding the control key, click on the axis of the sprocket, then go to my mates. It's automatically going to assume a coincident mate, and I'll hit the green check mark. And I'll finish my mates, just so we can see what's going on. So now this sprocket can be moved in and out, and it can be spun, but it's on a common axis with the axle of the wheel. The next mate we're going to make is going to be between this face and this face of this shoulder. Here I can just click on the surfaces rather than clicking on any planes or other features in the feature trees. So click on this surface here, this surface here. It brings the sprocket and the hub together. Again, I'm going to finish my mates for now. And I see we're almost done, but we see that this can still spin in place when we know, in fact, the purpose of these splines is to prevent the sprocket from turning with respect to the hub. So I'm going to do one last mate, and I'm just going to make this surface and this surface coincident with each other. And that has pulled the splines in alignment between the two different parts. The last part to insert is the locking ring, which prevents the cog or the sprocket from coming off of the hub. This surface will mate against this surface of the sp sprocket. And this surface and this surface need to be concentric with each other. We can always do an axial mate like we did before, but another method we can use whenever we have cylindrical surfaces is we can pick a cylindrical surface here and a cylindrical surface here and make them concentric with each other, which is the same as putting them on a common axis. So 
I'm going to do that first. I'm going to click on this cylindrical surface here. This cylindrical surface here. You see that it's brought the two onto a common axis. One little problem though is I want this fillet to be facing outward, not inward. So I can take my mate alignment box and toggle it to the other condition which just flips it around the other way. These are still on a common axis but they're just flipped around in a different direction. I'll toggle this the other way so again you can see this way the ring is facing inward with the fillet. This way it's facing outward. This is the direction I want it to be. So click on that and I can actually leave the mates box open I don't have to keep clicking the green check mark if I've got more mates to do. Now I'm going to click on this surface and this surface and bring the locking ring into contact with the sprocket. I don't really care too much about the orientation of this ring. It doesn't matter to me if it's spinning around because this is a locking ring tightened on a thread and the final orientation really is non-consequential. So I'm just going to finish there with my mates. And you'll notice because this ring is not completely constrained, it actually has a minus sign next to it indicating that it's not in a fully constrained condition. If I look at my feature tree, I also notice that for some reason the tire is also no longer fully constrained even though it was in the front assembly configuration. If I open this up, I can take a look at all the mates that are related to my tire. This is in a folder just below the name of the component. I'll check this open. These are the three mates that I made to orient the tire with respect to the wheel. You notice these are grayed out indicating that they are in a suppressed state. So to make sure that these mates are active in this configuration as well as the front configuration, I will just simply right click on it and click unsuppress in each situation. This guarantees that the mates are active in both the front and the rear assembly configurations. Now I'm going to go back to my front configuration of the assembly and confirm that this still looks the way we want it to look. So I've gone back to the front configuration and we see what has happened is that this has changed back to the front wheel configuration but now the front wheel has a sprocket and a locking ring which should not be there. So all we have to do is right click on those two components that we do not want in this configuration and we will suppress them. That grays these two components out for this configuration and makes them disappear. It's as if that information is no longer in the assembly. Now to double check, we'll go back to the rear assembly. Here we see we have the rear wheel configuration activated and we have the sprocket and the cog unsuppressed. Go back to the front. sprocket and cog are suppressed and the front wheel configuration is activated. That is our complete front and rear assembly.